worked so well. She lived her life. I believe we know this in the victory of the cross and in the victory of what Christ has done. And that's what's being spoken here in this latter part of the eighth chapter. The question is asked, what shall we say uh, to these things? If God is for us, uh, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring uh, any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, uh, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedeth for us. And then the question is asked, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then Paul mentions several possibilities. He says, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. He says, no, and all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. He goes on to say, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, and as though we must have left out anything, he said, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, Father, for that victory that we have in you, we are forever thankful. Thank you that she lived her life in the light of that victory, in the light of that knowledge, in the light of that promise. Sometimes we talk about having a hope, but we realize that in our generation, people think about hope as being maybe so, hope so. But we know that with you, mm -hmm. it is a hope that is steadfast and sure. And like the psalmist who asked the question, for what shall I hope? And then he said, for my hope is in thee. Lord, thank you that she did that so many years ago. She placed her hope in you. And therefore, we're able to come here today as family and friends and to know that your promises are true. I pray, Father, you would dismiss us now in thy care and keeping. I know that you know the heart and the life of every person who stands here and sits here this day. You know their needs. You know at the place in which there will be that vacuum, there will be that place that it seems like nothing in this world can be able to fill with her passing. And yet I know also, Lord, that you're more than capable of making up the way and being in our life all that we need. And I pray that each one, Lord, will allow you to have that kind of ministry and that kind of, uh, and that, that, that kind of work in their life as they come to miss her, as they come to grieve, uh, with which is natural. I pray you'd help them to have a, a, a healthy grieving experience and grant them, O oh God, in these days ahead that we might be encouraged once again by looking at lives like hers and saying for me to live. Christ, for me to die is gain. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Hey, thank you for your work. I appreciate you, brother.